Welcome to Outriders review, you bored bastards. This review is strictly from single player perspective as I have no interest in co-op nor have I tried it. Game was played on PlayStation 5 and version I am reviewing is 1.02. So what is Outriders? Another game from one of the weakest and worst genres when it comes to quality and that is looter shooter with RPG elements that are tied to character progression. Does this game have anything that can make it stand out? Well, I can tell you immediately that it is better than those god-awful franchises called Destiny and The Division. But that isn't much of an achievement, since those two are lowest of the low. So how good or bad this game really is? Let's try to give as objective answer as possible, even though every review is subjective in the end to some degree. Let's start with story, characters, side quests, world, enemies and so on. No spoilers in this video, by the way. Story is decent one and got me interested in its conclusion. Short overview. Earth is in trouble, one of the last ships flies off to find another planet to inhabit and save the human race. As soon as everyone lands, things start to go wrong with weird anomalies and strange indigenous species. Your character gets frozen in cryo chamber for 30 years after landing on the planet and awakes to a complete shitshow. Planet is starred of resources, anomaly storms are killing almost everything it touches while select few get powers instead, the rest of human race is fighting each other as expected and so on. Even though premise is nothing original, it clicked for me despite mediocre dialogue and characters. Ending is also weak. This new mysterious planet looks fantastic. I love how different areas are presented with high attention to detail. Too bad game is not more open so that we can explore it more, but there are plenty of different areas so it is ok in the end. I enjoyed uncovering more story and lore bits and pieces through some interesting looking areas. Side quests complement story nicely as they have direct correlation to what is happening, offering at times answers and at other times mind-blowingly bad conclusions, leaving you with lack of explanations such as we don't know. It is pretty much overall feeling of this whole game, hit and miss. I would still count story as positive because there was clearly much greater effort put in than in some other games at this genre and at times story delivers and at other times fails, but I had positive feeling almost whole time while unraveling the mysteries of this interesting new world. What type of enemies this new world offers, you might ask? Well, not much in terms of diversity. Same goes for human enemies, as there isn't much depth to what you are up against. Game offsets lack of enemy diversity with fantastic aesthetics and details on each enemy type. Especially humans with their insanely cool looking armor sets and masks. Not to mention game offers plenty of gore with torn heads, torsos and limbs flying off in each direction. Gore and great enemy aesthetics makes encounters much more fun even with lack of enemy diversity. Let's talk about the gameplay and character progression. Also hit and miss, but Outriders is mostly fun. Gameplay is fast and dynamic with unique concept of healing. In Outriders you heal by killing enemies in a certain way, depending on the class. This mechanic changes everything as it forces players to leave turtle tactics. Using cover in this game doesn't mean safety. Enemies will flush you out with grenades rather quickly if close by and surround the player if possible. Human AI is quite good as ranged enemies flank and run to cover whenever possible, making fights interesting at times, at least when going through story and side content. End game is different story, but I will get to that later. Fights against monsters are basic bum rush mode with some ranged monsters staying behind and puking from distance. Bosses are alright, but nothing to write home about, except for the amazing spider boss. That thing is really something, and whole location of that particular fight is spectacular.
other bosses fall short to this epic fight, as they all play out pretty basic. Interesting mechanic throughout boss and elite fights is interrupt, which adds some depth to these encounters. Classes are fairly diverse and interesting to play. I have played Trickster for vast majority of time and dabbled into Pyro a bit. Due to game's heavy focus on abilities and aggression with fantastic aesthetics and gore, Outriders is tremendous fun at times to play. Classes have very fun and diverse abilities and each class can have 3 equipped at the same time out of 8 available. This leads to many fun combinations and most of them are accompanied with amazing special effects, which adds a lot of overall feel and impact. Character progression, meaning character building, has lots to offer in terms of mods that add various effects to weapon attacks and abilities. This is core system for all builds, as skill trees are extremely limiting and offer almost nothing to play around with, except for three predefined paths that are mandatory to get to final nodes in order to make builds viable. Despite weak class tree system, overall character progression is good, as it offers nice bit of variety. Now we get to the end game and loot system, where for me this game falls apart. As I said, side content is nothing spectacular, but still decent and enjoyable to some degree. Upon beating the game, expeditions are unlocked, which are true end game content. There are 15 tiers of difficulty that span to enemies and gear of level 50, even though max player level is 30. So to have any chance on higher tiers, you have to use solid build with gear at appropriate level. This whole system is not bad at all, as I can appreciate how much difference upgrading gear even for one level can make, which is not something you see in games with gear levels usually. So you are working throughout tiers, which would be fine idea if expeditions weren't so goddamn boring and monotonous. Same shit every time. Waves and waves of enemies spawning from everywhere. That is it. As basic as it gets. At least during side content I feel like there is meaning to killing all these enemies as there is progression path that makes sense to some extent and encounters aren't so badly structured. Expeditions are literally this. Get to first area, kill million of enemies, get to second area, kill million of enemies, maybe charge obelisk in the meantime which is badly designed goal by the way, get to last area, kill millions of enemies and then get your loot in the end. For solo players like myself, this becomes boring rather quickly. Co-op I can't comment on. You tell me in comment section how fun expeditions are in co-op. Another horrible expedition idea are time limit tiers, which are completely unrealistic for most expeditions and serve only one purpose and that is to increase the grind. You would think that this forces players to think about builds and come up with more stuff that can get them through. Instead, it is a very detrimental system to the whole game as it forces players to stick with mostly one or two builds for each class that can do good times because Outriders is a very unbalanced game when it comes to playstyles. In co-op, time limit tiers might work to some extent if the game was more polished and balanced, but not like this. Instead of punishing players for trying to create more versatile playstyles that would make the game more fun, they should put leaderboards with additional rewards for people who want to test their times. Another issue with expeditions are encounter setups. As solo player be prepared to die from a hit or two in higher tiers, unless you go full tank style which then leads to much slower times. These expeditions show all the flaws with Outriders gameplay, such as almost useless dodge mechanic even with Phantom Dash upgrade, too much AoE from enemies, too many enemies in general, players getting stun locked because almost everything that touches you staggers, making reloading and avoiding incoming waves of enemies pain in the arse, flying enemies that can do insane damage and are generally difficult to deal with, especially on consoles and some other things. 
So what happens if you don't want to play expeditions but still want to continue proving the character? Well you can replay all side content, which is more fun no doubt, but gear levels go up only to 42 in that case and to level it further you have to play expeditions as upgrading gear, cost, drop pod resources that can only be acquired by completing expeditions. Now on to loot system and crafting. Side content is quite rewarding and by replaying it you are going to get good amounts of loot, even though it only goes up to level 42. Expedition rewards on the other hand are god awful, making expeditions not even worthwhile doing before reaching highest of tiers. So game forces you to play expeditions in order to reach max character potential, but doesn't incentivize players to play expeditions because they are boring, rewards suck and there is time limit to stop you from acquiring good loot. Brilliant. Well at least then RNG should be more forgiving, right? Wrong. RNG is really bad, as it slows down acquiring wanted gear a lot. Each piece of gear comes with 3 random stats, which can be something like anomaly power, cooldown reductions, bonus fire power, close range damage, status power, etc. Then on top of that you have 2 mods for epic and legendary, which are random of course. Oh yeah, and you can only switch one mod through crafting, because other slot gets locked forever in that case. What a dumb fucking idea. Again, only slows down gear acquisition even more. Want more? Well, there are set bonuses for legendary gear that can make a drastic difference. However, not every legendary gear is part of the set. I mean, for fuck's sake. Either make them all part of sets or neither. It's there just to piss off players more and make them replay boring content more and more, increasing frustration and tedium. Crafting system would be really good if there wasn't this mod exchange limitation, as it offers options to improve rarity, raise attributes and switch weapon variant, which is quite cool. Visually on PlayStation 5 game looks great and frame rate is stable. Special effects, details and gore are truly spectacular and one of the biggest factors why playing this game is still fun mostly, even if that fun comes in bursts and quickly disappears while soloing end game content. Audio work is not great however. Guns sound horrible, I mean really bad. Voice acting is mediocre with some above average and some below average performances. There's another monolith I need to examine over yonder. But the danger is too great. You can't handle these creatures? I really find that hard to believe. I don't fear the creatures. I... I fear what I would do to them. Music I didn't even notice, so no clue what to say about it. Skill sound effects are awesome though, they really add more zest for the lack of better word. It is clear devs could have made great sound effects for everything, but failed in most other sound effect areas. There are many issues at the moment with the game when it comes to stability, servers, bugs, performance on PC and other consoles besides PlayStation 5, though I don't know how it is on Xbox X. Even though game runs great on PlayStation 5, I still have numerous bugs like UI not working, sudden inability to shoot or use any abilities, game freezes occasionally, server disconnects, etc. All of this is extremely annoying when playing unrewarding and boring expeditions that you have to repeat from the start upon death. Let's conclude this video by judging Outriders from single player perspective. This game is hit and miss, in almost every aspect. For whatever good it does, it fucks up tremendously too. It is still more fun than many other games in this low quality genre and it makes decent effort with story and world, which I can appreciate. At this time I give Outriders 6 out of 10, which means decent or above average game. Potentially in my mind this game could reach 7, which means good game, but it would need to change a lot of things which is going to take time. First they need to solve all the bugs and instabilities, then balance the game and lastly come up with better end game ideas and loot system. Anyway that would be all, thank you for watching this review and see you soon you colonizing bastards.